All right, it is install day, at least a temporary install. Um, being completely fair to Starlink, after going zero for three on the initial deliveries of the main dish, uh, the extra cable, and the long arm, we finally did get the long arm. It didn't work. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, but the, uh, the team at FedEx actually did go two for two on getting the Ethernet adapter here. Um, the original plug from the satellite goes in this end. Out this end uh, comes a cable that goes to the router, um, essentially plugs in the same way as the original satellite cable does. Uh, and then on this side also is the network connection back to the rest of my network. Um, this is the transceiver that's going to go into my Unify. has nothing to do with Starlink. That's on my end. But this other box is the roof mount. Um, the roof mount was on back order. Uh, I ended up finding out the long arm wall mount just would not work for my install. Uh, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. Um, so the long arm wall mount finally came off back order at the end of January. And... We are going to do essentially a temporary ground mount at first and then move it onto the roof probably next weekend when I've got some help uh, just up on. The Speaking of the roof mount, let me show you real quick what comes in there. First of all, you have the main mount. Um, the intent here is that the tube on the roof mount is at vertical. Uh, and so it can sit at whatever angle your roof happens to be. Move the tube to a vertical position and then tighten the knob. Uh, it is pretty solid construction, just like the wall arm mount was. You can see it's, it's actually got fairly thick metal that they've, they've then have kind of hollowed out underneath, both to make it cheaper to produce and to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, it will hold in place with two lag screws that are also included with the kit. These lag screws are very similar to the wall mount um, you'll just have to judge, you know, for your wind load, your location, whether these are going to be appropriate. They also include some packets of sealing tape. Uh, so this is to help make sure that as you're putting holes in your roof, you're not creating new leaks. Um, and they include a box of cable clips so that you can run the cable from wherever you put the wall mount uh, in the satellite to where you need to run the cable into the house. And for this kit, they did the weird kind of nylon bag thing, just like came with the wall mount. I'm not really sure why they include this. My best guess would be like something to put the different parts in so that you can safely carry them up a ladder. Um, it is a little bit odd, but it's in the kit too. They also include the instruction book. And just as you can see here, the intent is for the satellite to snap into the wall mount using the proprietary mount system the bottom of the satellite stem. Um, just like with all the other mounts, they give you one page of regulatory warnings, one page of, hey, here's what came in your box, uh, and then here's your entire install instructions. So if, if for your particular application, you need something more than this, you're gonna have to go to the forums or the internet. Well, last weekend, I went through the process of installing the long arm wall mount it turns out that for our particular house, our particular needs, this is not going to be a good match. Uh, even though I could get it mounted on the house fairly strongly, the actual wall mount, if you look from the side, will clear the gutter in terms of being far enough away um, from the house. Once we added um, the spacer in the form of a 2 by 10 um, the thickness of the 2x10 gives us just enough width to clear the gutter. Uh, one of the things that we encountered, however, was that the vertical stem of the satellite will not clear the height of the eave. As you can see straight on, the height of the eave is roughly 8 to 10 inches, and the built-in uh, satellite mount will need to be vertically high enough to be able to clear the top of the roof line by a couple of inches in order to be able to orient itself using the motor. This just isn't the case.
the actual satellite stem is built in. You can see by my hand that you really only have about six to eight inches, but because of the motorized nature of the satellite, the reality is from the point where you're mounting, whichever mount you use uh, actually finishes the, the vertical piece, either the pipe adapter or the roof mount or the long arm mount like we have. Um, you really only have a couple of inches between the bottom edge of the satellite and the actual pipe um, because of the asymmetric base it has to orient in the mount in a very specific way you've got to account for that in your install and when we actually did the long arm wall mount we accounted for the distance from the house uh, horizontally right north off the house um, but the height restriction and the articulation of the satellite just turned out not to be viable. So that's what forced us back to a roof mount and pushed us into kind of a part one, part two installation where, you know, part one will uh, install with a ground mount and some extra cable. Uh, and then we'll run a permanent install of the rest of the cable. And then next week we'll actually move it to the roof and do a, a finalized cable installation.